what the Greeks said, not what we think, but if you read what the Greeks said, they said they got everything from Egypt. Pythagoras spent 15 years in Egypt and they said that they got all their knowledge from the Egyptians. Now, when did we come up with the idea that the Greeks created everything from scratch? It happened in the 18th and 19th century. It was decided that it was just not appropriate for all this knowledge to come from an African country. If you read what the Greeks said. All right. All praises, honor, glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha, Quarash. All right, which uh, Yahweh is named Heavenly Father. Bahasham is in a name, Ba'en Hadasham name. Yahweh Shai is the name of the begotten Son, and Racha Quarash means Holy Spirit. Literally translated Spirit Holy, Racha Spirit Quarash Holy. And really, man, hey, I was just scrolling through social media. And um, I came across this video and in these comments, and it's like, hey, really, call her Lolium, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. All praises to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. All right? Because for everything, for one, Rakata Yahweh Hawah, Nathala Nawa call. Bless the He who gives us everything, that gives us all. Um. We have this knowledge, we have true knowledge and understanding, man, of history, of the current times. You know, we understand why things are happening and, and the future, man. That's all through the spirit. You know, that's, you know, we see through a glass darkly, so that's some history <coughs> that we don't have. It's not needed, but we have a good grasp throughout the generations, man, just off the scriptures. So we heard what this guy said. He gives this credit straight back to Egypt, which... Isn't a hundred percent accurate. Well, well, what did Alexander do? You know, what did they do in Egypt? They built a library. All right, they built the library and took all this knowledge from the east and gathered things and put it in this library. All right. So not just what they got from Egyptia, Egypt, Egypt, so like, Egypt, Egypt, but mainly, you know, where did they get wisdom from? The scriptures. The Israelites, man. Hell, the Israelites will make uh, Egypt great. But first, I want to hit on this, man, this comment. The Egyptian called their country Kemet, literally the black land. Kem means black in ancient Egyptian. Ignorance, ignorance will argue that North Africa isn't black. And that is a, a debate. I don't know how this is the debate. This is simple knowledge right here. You would think, right? Well, that's because we have the spirit. Um... The Egyptians were dark skinned, and when Alexander took over, they they took over Greece. That's in Daniel. That's the king of the north and the king of the south. All right, the king of the north, of course, being in Greece, and then you got the king of the south, who's those same Grecians, all right, who are Edomites that took over uh, Egypt, and that's the Ptolemies. Because somebody comes and says ancient Egyptians were white, you know, like Cleopatra, she was an Edomite. But that's because the Ptolemies took over Egypt. It says there was still a small group of them. They are called Coptic Egyptians. Black land because land they grew. We don't black next to now bullshit. Um, and then it's just a lot of fucking shit they don't know, man. All right, they all over the place. Um, but first, let's get this commit thing. Why is it called commit? Genesis 10 and 1. Now, these are the generations of the, of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And as of them were sons born after the flood, right? And every, every civilization, basically, every body has... A, a flood story, a flood account. And that's because 
After the flood, this is all who was left. Noah, his three sons, and their wives. And what happened? They told, they told, they told their children about these things, and it got passed down. As it got passed down, you know, things were added, things were taken away. But the Lord kept a good record of it right here in the scriptures, just like throughout all history. All right. So um, it says, verse six, and the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, Foot, and Canaan. And Mizraim are the Egyptians. Matazariam. All right. Egypt. All right. Matazariam. Okay, but this is the word for him. It means hot ham. What the same way the word chemistry comes from? Because this first character here, Hebrews right to left. So this first character here is the ha. All right, ha. So C H A A, and the word is ham. Where the word chemistry comes from? Chemistry, and it means hot. Because Egypt is, I mean, yeah, Egypt, Africa, all right, is fucking hot, man. <laughs> okay? So let's uh look something up. Let's see what they say. Right, Google, this is what dude put. It literally means black land because of the black soil. See, but they don't have this. But look, well, they go off on the meaning of the word Kemet, all right? But then they tell you uh, the the Arabic is Mitzr, which is derived from Mizram. Well, that's Yiddish, but it's Matzariah, the name of the son of biblical Ham, all right? And what was it called? Let's get the scripture. So this is Psalms 105.23. Israel also came into Egypt and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. So that's what it was called. Kemet, yes. Hamat. All right? Because that was the land of Ham. All right. The land of him. And that's what it goes to. And we have this understanding through the spirit. All right. And then also, you know, just like Egypt itself, what made Egypt great? People, Egypt, this Egypt, that the same thing that made this Egypt great, the Israelites. All right. The Lord made Egypt great through, through Joseph. Let's see. For one, that part, Egypt was, before Egypt became this powerhouse, it was split up into these basically nodes, all right? These different cities, essentially. But Egypt became a top city and all those other lands, you know, or they were their own provinces. Let me see if I can find this on Google.
Oh, I got work. I don't know. Let's see. Right. Well, this doesn't go all the way into it, but this is enough, actually. This this line is enough. Ancient Egyptian civilization coalesced, united. Okay. Around 3150 B.C., with the political unification of Upper and Lower Egypt under the first king of the first dynasty, Narmir. Like you. Damn, what's the name of that? It's a good documentary that goes into it. Um, like Signs of the Time? That's not the name of it. Patterns, something patterns, patterns of evidence. Damn, call a long time by Shania was shy. Watch this, you know, if it's on your spirit too, watch it, it's great. And it goes into this Egyptian thing too, man. It goes to a lot of stuff. I, this, this is crazy. And it goes into the first, when Egypt became Egypt. And we have this account right here in Genesis. That's the bottom line. All right. The scriptures tell us this. So this is Genesis 47. So Egypt, you know, was it, for, for lack of a better phrase, was a thriving area at the time. But with Joseph, it became the powerhouse that it was. It started with Joseph. And this was, and remember, this is a long period of time from Joseph to the Exodus. That's 400 years. You know, uh, 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 essentially, you know. So this is Genesis 47 and 1. Then Joseph came and told Pharaoh and said, my father. Uh, right, this is the famine. I'm going to get to the point. This Genesis 47, 13. And oh yeah, that's another thing. It's the spirit of the Lord. Because <laughs> the Lord gave Pharaoh a dream. All right. A seven years, fatted cows. I believe it was seven years and seven numbers com number completion. Anyway, seven is number completion. And seven years with skinny cows. And it was a prophecy of the famine. So through the wisdom and knowledge and the spirit that was in Joseph, they prepare for the famine when the rest of the world didn't know. All right? That area, I should say. You know, known world. Verse, um, so, which caused Jacob and the 12 sons, you know, our forefathers, to go into Egypt to get help. Well, the 11 sons, because Joseph was already here. So let's go ahead and get to the point. You know, Genesis 47, 13. And there was no bread in the, all the land, for the famine was very sore, so that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the corn which they brought. And Joseph brought the money to Pharaoh's house. And when money fell in the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence? For the money fell it. And Joseph said, give your cattle. So Egypt is, is becoming this powerhouse, man.
<laughs> and I will give you give you for your cattle if money fails. So look, we can barter now. And they brought their cattle unto Joseph, and Joseph gave them bread in exchange for horses and for the flocks and for the cattle of the herds and for the asses. And he fed them with bread, all their cattle for that year. When, the, when that year was ended, they came unto him the second year and said unto him, We would not hide it from my Lord, how that our money is spent. My Lord also hath our herds of cattle. There is not aught left in the sight of my Lord, but our bodies and our lands. Wherefore shall we die before thine eyes, both we and our land, by us and our land for bread, and we and our land will be servants unto Pharaoh, and give us seed that we may live and not die, that the land be not desolate. And Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh, for the Egyptians sowed every man his field, because the famine prevailed over them. So the land became Pharaoh's. And as for the people, he removed them to cities from one end of the borders of Egypt, even to the other end thereof. So he, he, he changed it all up. And Egypt became known as the Egypt that we all think about when we think of ancient Egypt. And not like dude mentioned Egypt during the time of Ptolemy. That's not ancient. This is ancient Egypt. All right. Um, yeah, now that's really the point on that. All right, so this is what made Egypt great. Let's get another uh, another point. The Josephus says it plainly, but this is like some good stuff too. Some of this, some of this is probably fucking bitter, you know, lies. But uh, it's like some good stuff. Let's see if I can find this in, right here. Damn. Uh, come on, I just want to find it. Well, in the Josephus, it goes into Abraham, you know, bringing arithmetic to the Egyptians. And, um, yeah, here we go. Josephus 8, the works of Flavius Josephus, he communicated to them arithmetic and delivered to them the science of astronomy. For before Abram came into Egypt, they were unacquainted with. It talks about Egypt already flourishing at this point. So it was doing its thing. But when Joseph got in a uh, position, that's when it really became Egypt. But um, find on page. Here we go. For whereas the Egyptians were formerly addicted to different customs and despised one another's sacred and custom rites and were very angry one with another on that account, Abraham conferred with each of them and confuting the reasons they made use of, every one of their own practices demonstrated that such reasonings were vain and void of truth. 
Just like we're doing now, telling these modern day wise men that what they have is nothing. As it says in the scriptures. Um, come on. This is 1 Corinthians 1. And 25, because the foolishness of the most is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. You know, and we are that uh, weakness and foolishness, man. Like it says, the uh, the foolishness of preaching. Not because this word is foolish, but, well, for one, we're saying we're going to get spiritual powers, which is true. So let's just go off that example. To the world, that's foolishness. That's crazy, right? But that's what's going to happen. Then we're going to have telling you things that you really know. You, everybody knows God is real, man. You know? They, that, but they attribute it to idols or the universe, which is something created. Or flat out in denial. But everybody know we got placed here. We were created. Yeah, we got to go ahead and tell you the truth of it. But verse um, 27, but the most I have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and the most I have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised have the most I chosen. Yeah, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. And that's the point. We're that foolish, you know. <laughs> we were just... Regular men, but through the spirit, we now have this knowledge, man. Actual understanding. Just as our forefather had understanding. And he spoke against the wickedness of the heathens, just like we're doing now, man. This wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2. And this is the, the wicked speaking. Verse 12, therefore let us lie and wait for the righteous because he is not for our turn and he has clean contrary to our doings. He upbraided us with our offending the law and objected to our infamy, the transgression, the transgressings of our education. So we speak against these things. We speak the truth. We understand that uh, the information they give you is misinformation, is, is lies. He professes to have the knowledge of the Most High. And he called himself the child of the Lord. And we are. We are the children of the, of the Lord. Are right? we the children of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. All right. And we have the knowledge given from Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechai And that's why they hate us. <laughs> that's why they made sure they kept Jake going off. They kept Israel hidden from us. Told us we niggas, we Mexicans, we Puerto Ricans, we Chileans, we Argentinians. They hid this knowledge from us because they know when this truth is out and we in the spirit, man, we're going to bring it out, man. And we bring this truth out, the Lord is going to what? Protect us. They know these things. So they made sure they got you, your women twerking. They made our men effeminate. Got our, our, our women just lost and bird brained out here, man. Got these men just murderous. They don't want us to have this knowledge, man. He was made to prove our thoughts. He is even, he is grievous unto us, even to behold. For his life is not like other men's. His ways are of another fashion. So they hate it that we bring out this truth. All right? Because, hey, the wicked is a liar from the beginning. Psalm 58 and 3. Even at Edomite in the video that, that we got the comment from. Yeah, America follows Egypt. Greece follows Egypt. That's because they reject the right ways. They gathered up 
a bunch of wisdom and knowledge and stored in the, in the uh, Library of Alexandria. But they chose to follow Egypt. You know why? Because this is spiritual Egypt, man. Revelation 11 and 8. Because the Lord's prophecies are true. And that's the point of this lesson. It's Revelation 11 and 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So this is spiritual Egypt. Point blank, period. Spiritual Sodom. That's why Sodom means every fucking way in spiritual Egypt. And those dead bodies are talking about the Israelites and not physically dead, but spiritually dead. He that turneth away from the Mosiah shall remain in the congregation of the dead. This is prophecy. And what would this place be? The place where we're taken to on slave ships. Deuteronomy 28, 68. And hey, these curses are a sign. If you don't believe these curses, you don't believe the Bible. If you don't believe that Israel will go through these curses, every last one of them, and only one people can say that went through all these, which are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. And yes, they put the North, so-called Northern Kingdom on the slave ships first. To you black-only Israelites, man. This is Deuteronomy 28 and 45. You don't believe these, you don't believe the Bible. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy power to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Because thou servest not Yahweh thy power with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. So we got brought low and put in this position because we, we went off as a nation. And... This is our punishment. But it said this punishment will be a sign. Deuteronomy 30 tells us what? We're going to remember ourselves in the land of our captivity. Same thing it says in Baruch, I believe, the third chapter. This is a sign. Therefore thou shalt serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. He shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. And when did this happen? In spiritual Egypt, we went through Babylonian captivity. We went through a, 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 a media Persian captivity. We went through the horror of Greek and, and Roman captivity. And they fucked us up. They killed us. But in, Greek, but in Greece, we got to fight. The Maccabees. All right. They killed a Rome. They killed us. They even enslaved some of us and made us fight in their coliseums. But Jerusalem at one point had his land, even though they came and fucked us up. Then we got to flee away and still keep our customs at least. A attempt to, you know, Jake was going off. But at 70 AD, we got to flee. So when did the yoke get put on us, we were completely destroyed to the point that we are dead while we are alive as a nation. Deuteronomy 28, 68, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. We come into that spiritual Egypt via ships. Where is that at? America. What image took over the world? Shazare Borgia. Remember, America is supposed to be this great Christian country. This great Jesus Christ serving country. And that was pushed to the world. The place where our Lord was crucified, his image was taken down and replaced. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. All right? And no man shall buy you, men and redeem you. All right? This is the word for bias, the Hebrew word, kwana, to get, acquire, create, buy, possess, to be bought, to cause, to possess, all right, um, to recover, redeemed. So nobody was going to deliver us out of this, man. Only the Lord can take us from these curses. Point blank, period. All right. But the point was, this is spiritual Egypt. 
And we're doing the same thing Abraham did. Now, they accepted his teachings, even though they corrupted it and started serving these different the stars and shit, you know. But um, because there is a science to true, uh, uh the true study of of the stars, the heavens. Issachar had that gift. What they doing now is all left hand shit and just bullshit, you know. But back to this, um, whereupon he was at, he was admired by them in those conferences as a very wise man and one of great sagacity. To, yeah, when he discoursed, which means uh, basically wisdom, you know, being wise like sage, wisdom. The when he discoursed on any subject, he undertook, and this not only understanding it, but in persuading other men also to assent to him, he communicated to them arithmetic, and delivered to them the science of astronomy. For before Abraham came into Egypt, they were unacquainted with those parts of learning. For that science came from the Chaldeans into Egypt and from thence to the Greeks also. And this, <laughs> this, was, this is Josephus here. Let's see. What time was he around? Thirty seven AD. No, these are not accurate. All right. Um, so yeah. <laughs> we have that knowledge of the most high, man, and this is true knowledge of history, present time, and prophecy. This is Isaiah. I believe it's 43. Let's see. This is Isaiah 43. I'm going to start at uh, the top. <sighs> I am going to start at the top. I'm going to just try to read through it briefly and stay on track, man. But it's all through the spirit. Spirit like the wind. Isaiah 43 and 1. But now thus said the Yahweh that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. So the Lord God us. Even while we're here, all right, scattered abroad amongst the waters in the furnace of affliction. All right, the Lord is uh, not going to let us be destroyed. And now this is actually the point of our deliverance. For I am Yahweh thy power and the Holy One of Israel thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. So that's what's coming. The Lord is going to come save us. He's going to destroy our enemies. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. And this is the complete end of the earth where we're at. So we're almost out of here. Everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yeah, I have made him. Bring And Lord willing, man, we're the elect. We're prepared for the glory of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. He's going to get glory to his name for the works he do in us. The works he's doing in us. It starts with this spirit. I, it said, <laughs> we're going to wake after the three and a half years and, it, and the nation's going to see it and be afraid, man. This Us getting this understanding, this truth is, is a big deal, brother. May Ha'abashim Yashai never take his Holy Spirit from us and cast us not from his presence. Yeah, Revelation 11.10. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, 
and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. You know, northern and southern kingdom, the two sticks. Um, yeah, one deep. That's that's that. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life heard the most high entered into them. And they stood. And that's the 350 years after we were completely destroyed, like the curse to say. And Deuteronomy 28, we just read two, two of them. All right. That's when we died. And, and then, so about 1960, the spirit came on, you know, our business. That's about 350 years from when we was completely destroyed in captivity, lost who we were, up until we got it back. Yeah. 350 years. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the most high entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. This is the knowledge from Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. We're dealing with wisdom from above. Being able to do this work is an honor and a privilege. It's a burden only in nature that is it's a heavy thing to do. James 1 and 16, do not err, my beloved brethren, every good and every perfect gift, it's like it, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and coming down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning, so the Lord don't change. So the Lord tell, the Lord tell us something, he's going to do it, and the Lord told us he will raise us up, all right, he's going to deliver us. And it starts with getting this good gift, the gift of wisdom. Wisdom of Solomon, I believe, the eighth chapter. Knowing who gift she is. All right, this gift of faith, Ephesians, the second chapter. So it's going to happen. Lord ain't going to change his mind. This wisdom is a good gift. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth. That we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So this... Hey, getting this word of truth is the down payment. Long, Lord willing, we enduring it, you know, because there's fine print, <laughs> so to say. Not really. The Lord made it plain, but there's uh, stipulations. That's a better word. All right. But getting this truth is the down payment of getting the kingdom, being first fruits, becoming God's. Alright. Con, let me get back to this. It's Isaiah 43. And. 7. Everyone that is called my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yet I have made him. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations, hey, uh, the scripture say, who is my, I don't want to butcher it. Isaiah 42, 19, who was blind but my servant or deaf as my message that I sent? Who was blind as he that is perfect and blind as the Lord's servants? You know, and we are that, man, you know. We were once in the world. Now we here. All right.
So, what was, oh yeah, Isaiah, for, next chapter. Isaiah 43. And 9. Let all the nations be gathered together. And let the people be assembled who among them can declare this. Be, uh, who among them can declare this and show us former things. So actual history. <laughs> the truth of it. Let them bring forth their witnesses. That they may be justified or let them hear and say it is truth. These are my witnesses, saith the Howard, and my servant whom I have chosen. That ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. So we understand what made Egypt great. We understand who set up Babylon, Media, Persia, Greece, Rome. We understand who took them down. As the scriptures say. We understand who ruled during these different focal points in history. Who established these kings and took them down. Because we were there. <laughs> you know. The Israelites was there in captivity. Or being delivered from captivity. And that's going to happen again. This truth is the proof. That we can go into history. Current events and prophecy. And tell and tell who's in control of all these things. What's going to and what's what's going to happen. You are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant, whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am Yahweh, and beside me there is no Savior. I And that doesn't mean that Yahweh Shai doesn't exist. The Lord is the one who set up Yahweh Shai. Obadiah says, Savior should be upon Mount Zion. So that cuts whatever madness you got going in your head to try to deny Yahweh Shai. That's simply saying Yahweh set up Yahweh Shai. And what, is this, what does Yahweh Shai say over and over and over? He's doing the will of his father. Okay? <laughs> Plain. I have declared and have saved and I have showed when there was no strange God among you. Therefore, you are my witnesses, said the Howard, that I am power, that I am God. The Lord told us these things were going to happen. They happened. They were once prophecy that became history. And in and out of that, we were there being saved out of it. The Lord took the burden off us of, ba of Babylon. The Lord took the burden off us in immediate Persia. He delivered of us in Greece. Those who fought for his name. I know we got our chastised, but he delivered us. And we went through what we had to go through. All right. The Lord kept our spirit in Rome because that was the way we was getting destroyed in Rome. You know. That was that was the start of us just being completely through. And that's this is Rome 2.0. The Lord kept our spirit. We had the sign of Yahweh Shai. All right, and we had to deal with our chastisement. All right, the Lord didn't let these nations completely destroy us now in America because hey, the Lord changed not, and the Lord is going to do what He did out of the first Egypt deliver us. Thus saith the Yahweh of uh, 13. Yeah, before the day was, I am he. That's why it's called the Ancient of Days. And there, before days. <laughs> and there is none. Hey, call Lolly, how about show me how I shine? We understand these things, man, through the Spirit. This is heavy. You know? Yeah, before the day was, I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? The Lord going to do what he do. Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake I have sent to Babylon, and have brought down all their nobles and the Chaldeans, whose cries in the ships. And this is Mystery Babylon, America. The daughter of Babylon. Who is the daughter of Babylon? Edom. Babylon 2.0. Rome 2.0. 
Nineveh 2.0. Assyria 2.0. That's America. Sodom fucking 10.0. This is perfected Sodom. All right? Just ridiculous. The Lord's going to take this place down for us. I am Yahweh, your holy one, the creator of Israel, your king. Thus saith Yahweh, which maketh the wind and sea. And that, uh, and that was really the point on that. You know? That was really the point on that. This is Isaiah 46. And... This all is just so hard. I'm a, I, I gotta, um, I'm gonna gotta Isaiah forty six and three. Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. And even to your old age, I am he. So from the beginning of us being birthed as a nation, coming out of Egypt, all right, to now, Yahweh is he. He is the power. And even to your whore hairs, which is gray, you know, white, old, will I carry you. And the Lord has poured us through all of it. The Lord brought us in it. The Lord poured us through it. And he's delivering us again. I have made and I will bear, even I will carry and will deliver you. To whom will you liken me and make me equal and compare me that we may be like? They lavish gold out of the bag and weigh silver in the balance and hire a goldsmith. He make it to the God? They fall down, yeah, they worship. Yahweh has shown that he is the God, the omnipotent one, the or omnipotent, the tomato, tomato. He showed that he's in control of all things. Ain't nobody else to bow down to, man. They, be, they bear him upon the shoulder. They carry him and set him in his place. And he steadeth from his place. Shall he not be, re, shall he not remove? Yeah, one shall cry unto him. Yet can he not answer nor save him out of his trouble. I don't ain't going to save you. Remember this and show yourselves men. Bring it again to mind, all ye transgressors. Return to Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. He showed us from... Delivering us out of Egypt, bringing us into America in the worst condition possible that he is power. Return to Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. He establishes these kingdoms. And he's showing his truth. He's brought his truth back to the earth in his name. Remember this and show yourselves men. Bring it again to mind, O ye transgressors. Remember the former things of old, for I am power and there is none else. I am power and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done. Let me read that over. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done. Saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. So the Lord has been, he's been told us the end. He prophesied it. He told us the different ages. He brought us through these different times. Got a book that has an account of this specific nation and all these eras. He prophesied it. 
and then wrote us about it. And gave us the faith to believe these words. To see these things, man. This is the honor and the privilege. A, a, a mouth, a. This is Luke twenty one fifteen, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. All right, we have a a lot of established philosophies, religions, and ways of life out here in the world. And we speak on and correct all those things with these scriptures. Whether it's history, prophecy, science so falsely called, we we attack all they bullshit with true history and facts and, and scriptures through the spirit ultimately. And prophecy ultimately like <laughs> which that prophecy goes both ways because this history was once prophecy. And we understand and see these things. For I will give you a mouth and with Luke 21, 15. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. We speak against all these things, man, and nobody can prove us wrong. Isaiah 46. And um, I'll just finish it out 11. That's really the point, though. Calling a rat, well, I'm hit, I want to hit 13 too, so yeah. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executed my counsel from a far country, yeah, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will do it. Hearken unto me, oh, hearken unto me, you stout hearted that are far from righteousness. I bring near my righteousness, it shall not be far off, and my salvation shall not tarry. And I will place salvation in Zion for Israel, my glory. All right. So how about some how Shai is saving us for his glory? He's coming to prove himself or reveal himself in power and might once and for all. And with that power, he's going to save Israel like he, he's done before. And it starts with this truth. <laughs> Man. Call all and how about show me how it's shy. Shalom.